Now, Origin Energy has warned that up to 600,000 households, as I mentioned a moment ago, will be facing uh, fee increases, power bill increases of 20% come July. This is also ahead of the energy regulator unfailing um, changes to default offers next week. At the same time, Graham, yes. we've got... Um, the future of a raring, this is the country's largest coal-fired power plant. This has mm. become quite a big issue in the New South Wales election and Chris Minns, the Labor leader, has actually put on the table the option of buying it back uh, to keep power prices down and also ensure reliability. How fascinating is this issue going to be? And do you think if Labor does win in two weeks' time, they're going to have to look at something like this with bills increasing in July? Well, well, the whole thing reflects the mess that the energy market is uh, nationally, really. The, the higher prices are things that have been coming through the system for some time. Everybody's known about it and government's particularly worried about uh, how it's going to respond. Uh, Iraring is uh, the biggest coal-fired producer in New South Wales and it's due to close in a, a couple of years' time. And the uh, energy market operator has said, well, that's about the time that New South Wales will run short of power. So there needs to be some sort of response. I think uh, both the Libs and uh, the ALP have their eye on Araring and seeing what should happen about its timing for closure. Uh, the, the Labor Party is following the lead, if you like, of Dan Andrews and in saying privatisation has been the problem. The answer is to renationalise things. Uh, that may or may not be the case. The, hi the history is that nationalised uh, entities often cost more and are less efficient. Uh, there needs to be really a, a wholesale approach to planning the energy market going forward uh, to head off those high prices and to give some stability for consumers into the future. Well, Matt Keane came out just last week and he said the Waratah super battery will be sufficient uh, to fill the place of a raring in 2025. Do you trust that a super battery is going to produce enough dispatchable power? <laughs> Well, look, it would have to be a very super, super battery. Um, there may be some modelling that suggests that may be the case. Uh, but I, I think uh, when you look at the scale of Araring, you have to make some pretty heroic assumptions to say that there are things that will keep the market going uh, uh, stable in a stable fashion and, and that a battery will be enough to, to take out the peaks and whatever. I think the experience is that the batteries have a certain uh, application uh, in keeping stability in the voltage in the system, but in terms of pro providing long periods of stable power, they're just not cut out for it. Yeah. Now, Graham, you've been reporting on the environment for a very long time now. We've seen today, uh, as I mentioned, Anthony Albanese has struck an 11th hour deal with the Greens to pass the National Reconstruction Fund through the Parliament. He commented mm. on it uh, from India. The parties agreed to an amendment to the bill, which is preventing future governments from using the fund to invest in coal or gas projects or log native forests. Um, can you actually explain what the reconstruction fund is going to be used for? And do you think it's perfectly acceptable that this amendment has been made or do you think it's a big deal? Well, you have to look in the, the uh, broad context of what's going on here. Uh, in the background, there's negotiations for the, the government's safeguard mechanism changes, uh, which the Greens are saying that the key demand is that there be no future coal or gas developments. Uh, the, um, the fund that uh, was the subject of legislation today uh, is looking at investing in industry going, going forward. Not necessarily fossil fuel industry, but in the past, the Morrison government has said, well, look, they will use these kind of funds to uh, kickstart gas development in the Beetaloo Basin and build pipelines and other things. Uh, the Greens have said, we don't want this fund to be used for that. The government has said, well, we never intended that it would be, uh, but they've excluded it. And what that has allowed the Greens to do is make a big deal about the fact that the government is recognising there is no future for fossil fuels in Australia. They're going to bag that and take it to negotiations for the safeguard me mechanism and try and extend that squeeze, if you like, on the fossil fuel industry. Uh, and that's a bit of a trap there for uh, the Albanese government. All right. Graham Lloyd, thank you very much for joining me.